Okay, so first we have my general. Uh, and this is the general of the cultists, a yes. version of the Demon Legion. Yes, and uh, it's a wizard monster with witchcraft. And um, he, he has a rule as Master Ritual, which makes him able to summon demons and uh, <laughs> some more stuff. <laughs> it gives him scout too, I think. The more stuff is probably worse. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> we'll see. Um, he has the essence of Mithril, so 2 plus armor, uh, binding scroll, and the scurrying veil, which uh, makes him able to march 20 and uh, gets the tiny height value. I think that's about it. Um, and that's. Uh, all for him. We have another cult leader, and it's a wizard adept with occultism. He's got the Ledger of Souls, which uh, gives me veil tokens for every model that dies within nine or twelve. I have to look that up. One for each that dies. Yes, for every wound model that's gone. Up to a maximum? Uh, I think it's six is the Oi. maximum you can have. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, he also has uh, item the fiendish snares, which makes one piece of terrain, my pot to the board, uh, dangerous terrain one and two for my opponent. That's him. And then we have a third character. It's the demonic symbiote. He has heavy armor. He has wizard apprentice with evocation. Hmm. He has a demonic manifestation, which is aura of despair. Uh, so if an enemy charge him or his unit, they get minus two in. Uh, the advanced move value and uh, he has paired weapons and with Kingslayer he also has Potion of Swiftness and a Dragonfire Gem so no special cultist items on him except. are any of the demon characters good at fighting close combat? Uh, that one is, uh, is a, some Good combat stats. I have to look it up a bit okay. further, but that's a combat character. These are just regular Wizard. wizards, which which fight very poorly, but he's rather good. I think he has five. We will come five. back to that as yeah. he starts fighting. <laughs> High strength, lots of attack, and a pretty good agility too. Okay. And the Nage is safe, so it's rather good. But those are not so much. I can say that the, the wizards and the, the cultists are unstable, so they work much like oh. the undead. Oh. While those that are a little bit more de demonic are. Um, Have the demonic crew. Supernal. Um, yeah. They are also unstable, but they can pass it with a. Discipline test. Exactly. So he has that one. And um, then we have two units of uh, cultists, 40 of them, with a musician, and the ghosts are uh, they are the standard bearers basically, no, nothing special there. But so that's uh, those two. Those two, they are the standards. Exactly. Uh, and uh, they have a rule that's unholy conduit, which makes makes them able to summon demon units too. And uh, within twelve of those ghosts, or standards, they also channel and, uh, and such. And they are unstable, but they are not fearless, so they can run away. Hmm. These, on the other hand, are. Phyllis and uh, the other possessed. Uh, Rod
really good combat blocks, while the cultists are um, much like zombies. Yeah, I very poorly. These are they have two attacks each. They are fearless. They have a Aegis 5 plus and a base strength of 4. Both these units also have the demonic manifestation Red Haze, which gives them one more strength. But uh, with every one, when they roll to hit in combat, they hit themselves. And, uh, so um, this unit also have great weapons. So they uh, basically strength seven. Two attacks each. These have spears with strength five. And they only cost eleven points each. Yes, they. Are, I, I think they are about the best best units in the book that you can only have two units of 25 and that's what you got yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes um, and the last uh, cultist piece which, um, far from um, finished but it will look amazing in the end I hope it's the ritual altar uh, it's kind of a spell casting war machine. It uh, get plus range for plus three in range for every wizard st that is within nine, nine or twelve by twelve. Nine, yeah, twelve. And they have uh, the great calls, the hereditary, uh, or um, hand of heaven. So. Uh, Grave calls with plus nine in uh, range is rather good. Definitely. And it is it is upgraded with a grand council, so it has a big base. Mainly because I want to be, build a big model. Um, so otherwise, it's uh, poor at combat, but has uh, eight wounds, five plus ages. I think, but it's very cheap and expendable. And hard hitting like most things it seems. Yeah, magic wise, so it's but only wood spells, nothing else. And then we have the my summoned units, which we'll get on the board after a while. We have two pieces, hope harvesters which uh, can be described as chariots with a weapon team. Right? It's a, a large monster thing. Uh, not chariots, they don't have impact hits, but a large monster with a small ball again. And then we have the hoarders, which uh, they have high resilience and uh, grinding attacks but they are most uh, big bump in the road and then we have more hard hitting myrmidons 23 of them so their resilience five four hit points the hoarders yes uh, and these they i think they have strength five and pretty solid core unit and they're called uh, Myrmidons. Uh, they're normal Myrmidons, I yes. see. No upgrades. And uh, let's see, I think the hoarders have a natural roots and uh, full command. Natural roots gives them one more combat risk. They probably eat change coins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Well. That's the armor, and these demonic units. They uh, the summoning works like this: that uh, I, for each in each magic phase, before I uh, siphon the veil, I can. Um, what do you call it? Can use my veil to veil tokens to summon the the units, and I can use at the most six veil tokens per turn. Uh -huh. um, so that's why you need all the veil tokens. Yes. From people dying. 
Yeah. <laughs> and uh, every veil token is worth about a hundred points, so I need to uh, sacrifice as many veil tokens as my the unit is worth in points. Uh -huh. And I can, uh, in one turn, I can uh, use the most I can use is six veil tokens. So I can't summon everything in one turn. Of course. And uh, these two are about 300 points, so a bit less. So I will need to use three veil tokens each for them. And um, the whole harvesters. Yes. The myrmidons will need six uh, veil tokens in themselves. And the hoarders will need five. So uh, the only only the hope harvesters can uh, get in at the same time. And for the first my first turn, I can only bring on a unit for two veil tokens. So that will be no, no unit in this case. And you're using the veil tokens before. You exchange them into dice. Yes. I see. And then you can exchange into dice to have for magic as well. Yes, the, the ones that are left. But you sh in this case I have channel, 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 channel. Exactly. It is a science, it's not an art. Yes. <laughs> so I, I will have lots and lots of veil tokens. The cultists deploy and go first, as per special rules, when the opponent chose the side. This is a frontline clash, and we're playing for spoils of war. The master of the cultists has these spells. The adept. No, the adept has these. And uh, which was the one? Which had these two? Uh, this, these are the altar. The elf altar. The adept and my apprentice and that one. And as for the apprentice, he doubles up on that one. Yes. Here you see the cultist lineup. Very few units on the board because they need to summon, especially from round two onwards, with their veil tokens. The units which can summon are this one, that one, the general, and that one. And how far away can they place the units? The unit must be fully within 12 of the summoner. Yes. We're now in the media session of the battle. The Sylvan Elves are deploying heavily on this side. Forest Rangers, the Avatar, Trides, Spare Elves, Picky Beasts. Here's the Master Magician of the Cultists. The air wavers around him. And these are the Sylvan Elf Master spells. And the dry matriarchs have this and this. So we have now ended the cultist game turn one. And on the left flank, these brave cultists have marched straight forward. Uh, the more cowardly ones have backed up over here. And uh, in the magic phase, we've got these spells off killing 10 of the spirals and that was it so now over to the sylvan elves the sylvan elves move like this advancing all over the line and the cultists have moved a big back, bit backwards in their second round a bit forwards with these cultists and now their summoning round starts with 16 veil tokens this side of the battle is pretty static a 
except spare elves dying. On the other side, the two hope harvesters summoned shot down almost ten archers and made them flee. Now turn to Sylvan Elves. In round two, the Kestrels charged these cultists, doing about eight wounds, and they're steadfast. Now round three for the cultists, and they advance up to block the two attacking dried and treeman units, so that the special unit is safe with the magicians. In turn three, the hope harvesters move about and the myrmidons are summoned onto the battlefield. This is the theme of this devious army of demons. They summon units all over the battlefield to arrive in the fray through Vale. The valence of demonic power the kestrel win this combat now but there are still cultists left they're about the power of zombies they're all about the power of zombies the avatar is in combat on the other side against cultists as well killing 10 or something including the uh, crumble and the elves are turning towards the center of the battle. Now they might be picking up a couple of the spoils of war. Turn 4 for the cultists. In turn 4 for the cultists, the possessed are charging the thicket beast and they do 7 wounds on themselves because when they roll 1 to hit, they hit themselves. Because of red haze and uh, Aegis for the cultists. Red haze indeed. Yes, seven dead by themselves. <laughs> the possessed lose this combat, but they are steadfast by one spearman. Other than that, these uh, coin eaters, uh, hoarders, have entered the battlefield, just chaffing the drides into the bottom of turn four. Sylvan Elves are now beginning. The Kestrel finally succumbs. Two Treekin die and seem to be losing the grapple for the center. The Spearmen tried to charge these uh, Myrmidons, lost the combat and fled. The Drides are into the Hoarders and the Avatar of Nature is finishing off the cultists. Turn 5 for the cultists. Dang it. The wizard master, no, uh, the cultist unit here of possessed charges into the rides with the apprentice wizard who is also a mighty fighter. That is this guy with the hood. Turn 5 for the cultists. And the drides fled from combat, failing their steadfast test. And the few possessed remaining, or one I guess, one champion, overrun into these. The forest. We're into the cultists' last turn. The spearmen keep fleeing. The forest rangers did the first decent job on the Sylvan Elf side this battle uh, <laughs> against a very weak opponent. The two characters have one wound left uh, remaining, each of them, the Magician Adept and the uh, combat hero of the cultists. However, the cultists are picking up all the spoils of war with the hysteria that is unmatched.
in our time. The two cultist heroes died, but not before having cast Breath of Corruption on the unit, and they killed six forest rangers in total. Now the last turn is playing out. There's not much the Sylvan Elves can do, but they will do what they can against a few units remaining here. And uh, the cultists hold a spoil of war, a spoil of war, and are there any more? That there as well? You have. Oh, I have one as well. Of course. 80 cultists dead later. A 80 dead cultists later. Sitting on a tree. <laughs> The uh, forest rangers charged the Myrmidons, killing ten, and the last were vanquished by demonic rules. But the cultists have two of the spoils of war, thereby winning solidly, in addition to having substantially or moderately more uh, points left on the table. A good entry for a new section of the vampire, no, of the demon army. And this uh, army list is found on download supplement section, I think, just below the ordinary ar armies, amongst the Makar and uh, what are they called? Those Norse barbarians. And are they mostly not legal to play in tournaments? I, those that I have been to have uh, all accepted them, so, but ETC won't. <laughs> okay, so it's a worthy option. Mostly based on summoning tactics which are central. Welcome to the cultists. 